All right, Eklund, still breaking down exactly what his uh, purpose was in this case. We'll figure it out in a second. In the meantime, what do you make of the last couple of days? And specifically, I want to talk about George Thomas. That was some explosive testimony when you have a co-defendant testifying against his uh, uh, accomplice in a way and saying that he's the one who actually shot Chris Newsom. Now, he says, I didn't watch him actually shoot him, but I, I was right there when it happened. I heard it. I, I, I heard this burst of flame saying that it was Boyd who then set Newsom's body on fire. What did you make of his testimony? It Ridiculous. He was a ridiculous witness. Why don't you tell me what you really think about his testimony? It's, it's, I can't. My spirit is weary. So you've had 12 years. You had your own trial in which you had the opportunity to say that this man did it and you didn't do it. You didn't let your attorney know that, hey, a whole nother human being was the one who pulled the trigger. No. And then you wait 12 years later in which you have the best deal of the lifetime to get out to get out early so you can see the sunlight and suddenly all your testimony has changed. I cannot. That witness was not helpful. That's not what justice looks like. I think the prosecution is trying to manufacture a case that they don't have against Mr. Boyd. I got to say, I mean, in terms of his credibility, it was interesting to hear him say that he was uh, continually with this uh, Latalvis Cobbins, another person, another co-defendant in that house and said he never heard anyone getting raped or being attacked, yet it's a small house. Also, so that's kind of strange for him to attack his credibility on top of the fact, uh, you know, that he says he didn't do anything. You know, he was convicted, but yesterday on the stand, he basically said he did nothing wrong. So we'll have an opp opportunity to talk more about Mr. Thomas in a minute. Just want to give everybody an idea that last witness who got on the stand, uh, that inmate, it was mostly just to eliminate his number from cell phone records so the jury doesn't get confused. Not too much to talk about. We have a new witness on the stand. Let's see what her role is in this case. All right, Eklund, if anybody's been following this trial, uh, Danielle Lightfoot's somebody that they might have seen before because she actually testified uh, in Boyd's trial back in 2008, the federal charges, the accessory after the fact charges. And this is interesting because she's talking about seeing him and Mr. Davidson uh, right after this alleged attack on these two people and what her interaction was with them. And it's very curious to hear. What do you make of it? Um, I think that it actually just confirms that Davidson did all of it. But what it also, if I, if I was a defense attorney in this case, I would also set the stage. You saw that um, the DNA evidence was only of Mr. Davison and his half brother. So um, if I'm defense, I'm like, hey, if I'm Boyd, if I just saw him mutilate, basically, let, let's be clear. We're in Tennessee. They killed, raped, kidnapped, and murdered violently to like a young white couple. All right. And if I witness that, I'm not saying anything. Then you have Miss Lightfoot's testimony who stated that although she had an issue with Davidson, she gave Mr. Boyd her key, her house key. So she knew that Mr. Boyd didn't really do anything. That is what the testimony is revealing to me. What it, what it basically confirms is that Mr. Davidson was devoid of any human emotion, that him and his brother went all natural born killers on this young couple, and that Mr. Um, I mean, him and Miss him and his cousin, I mean, him and his half brother right, basically right. went all uh, Woody Harrelson on this young couple. And then you have Mr. Boyd. He's trapped. Well, what is he going to do? It's interesting because it does still lie into the story that he was an accessory after the fact. I mean, has it told anything more that he helped rape? or murder or kidnap or rob this couple. That's the question for this jury. This is the first time they're hearing this testimony or they should have heard this testimony. Yeah. All right, Eklund, so that's the end of that witness. Very, very uh, comical witness at times. Yeah. Seemed kind of nonchalant about what was happening and she didn't really know what was happening. Uh, it was interesting to watch nonetheless. So I'm curious your perspective as she leaves the stand and what was the defense trying to go with here? That Davidson point the finger at him. He's the one who had something to hide. And if anything, Mr. Boy did, it was just trying to uh, be an accessory after the fact. He had nothing to do with the murder or the attack. You tell me. Yeah, I think that what she, what she actually puts down is that Boyd was terrified. Boyd said nothing real. Um, you have Davidson, who's doing all the talking, who actually said, hey, we shot somebody. You have Boyd, I mean, you have Davidson, 
who is admitting that he wants to go to Atlanta. You have Boyd, who just wants the key. Um, what she actually uh, confirmed is that Davidson was the ringleader. Davidson w had a reason to want to leave the scene. Davidson is the one who was on probation. It was Davidson. There was no connection to Boyd to the actual crime. Didn't you think it was a little strange that she would just let these... Basically, I mean, she knew Boyd better than Davidson, but she allowed them to stay in the house even when she sees him on the news? Yeah, well... Because you know you're you're innocent until proven otherwise. So what? Wow, well, there you what, go. <laughs> right. That's the so, lawyer in you, Acklin. Yeah, and and she was about her birthday. It was her right, birthday. Right, right. Not to y'all. So um, and again, she had a relationship with Boyd. That further confirms that she did not fear Boyd. Boyd came. Boyd was the one who allowed Davidson to come in. Boyd yeah. was the opening. So that's the only reason Davidson was even in her house was because of Boyd. And that's and a she, great point. That's exactly what the defense, as you said, should exploit, the fact that she didn't fear Boyd and look what he's yeah. on trial for. Uh, Taylor Shaddix is a new witness that just took the stand. So, Eklund, let's jump live and then we'll break down what her testimony is. Okay, another witness called by the state to try to see a connection to the defendants uh, moving along here. So I'd like to just ask you, Eklund, what do you think about the deal that was promised to George Thomas, the man who testified yesterday, the co-defendant? He was facing two consecutive life sentences plus 25 years. Now he's promised he only has to serve 85% of a 50-year prison sentence, which means he could get out in 42 and a half years. Have you ever heard anything like that? No, no, I've, I've never heard that. And um, it just, really confirms my adage. I keep saying that, you know, uh, snitches don't get snitches. Snitches don't get stitches. They get probation, a fine, and community service. You basically um, incentivized him to lie on the stand. He basically went up there and just changed his whole story. Now he wasn't there. He was, a con he was convicted of rape. He was convicted of murder. He was convicted of kidnapping. And he's going up there saying that he wasn't there and that it was Boyd who pulled the trigger. That makes no sense. Well, he let me ask you about that. Like, he's the state's witness. They've called him on to be truthful. And yet this is the same prosecution that prosecuted him. They know what he did. And now he's going on the stand saying he did nothing wrong. So why should we believe him? You know, that's the part that always confused me. Yeah, there's no reason to believe him. And he's basically setting because the prosecution kind of opened the door for appeals. You can't you can't say that he wasn't innocent in his trial and suddenly we're just we're just we're just eating up his testimony for Mr. Boyd's trial. It makes no sense. It's like legally repugnant. Yeah, that, that's the thing. I mean, if you're the state and you want to seem credible and you want to seem that you're putting on a credible case, then you're going to call a witness who's basically saying that you state even though I'm your witness, I disagree with what you did earlier by prosecuting me. It was wrong. I did nothing wrong. I, nothing happened. It's interesting to hear. We're going to take a break. When we come back, we'll jump live. As I've said before, it's an interesting day so far. Stay tuned. We'll be back. Okay, so here's the disturbing aspect of this. That top that belonged to Shannon, the question is, was there bleach? Because it's alleged that these defendants, including Mr. Boyd, now he's grouped in with them, used bleach to try to remove the DNA from different areas of uh, her body. And specifically, they say that they poured bleach down her throat to get rid of the DNA of the defendants. That is such a disturbing aspect, Eklund. And, and how have they tied that to Mr. Boyd? And do you think the defense has done a good job of trying to say he was nowhere near that? Yeah, um, they haven't been able to tie it to Mr. Boyd. What they have been able to tie it to is Mr. Davidson. And um, because it seems that George Thomas just up and lied as George Thomas was convicted of the rape and the murder and the kidnapping of the of the couple, it they made no sense. So it's just retrying the Davidson case. You do not have any evidence towards Mr. Boyd. Do we have um, do we have fingerprints on the bag uh, on the bag that? Um, that the, the that the couples were, were were tied up in. Do we know who the sock belonged to? They are really picking at low hanging fruit to try to get Mr. Boyd, and they're not being successful. All they're doing is just replaying the trial of Mr. Davidson. 
Well, then again, this jury didn't hear any of that. And in a way, maybe the prosecution is inflaming them and saying, can you believe what happened to these two young people? Let's describe the scene. Let's describe the scene that we are saying Mr. Boyd was a part of. Maybe, Eklund, we can't show you X, Y, and Z. And definitively, this is where he was and this is where he wasn't. But he was a part of it. And maybe that's which way they're going. We're going to have to see. In the meantime, let's take a break. When we come back, we're either going to be live or replay some important clips from this trial. Stay tuned.